This video covers compound interest and depreciation, and a very important concept in IB Maths AI found in topic one, number and algebra, under the subtopic of financial mathematics. It's important because it's pretty much guaranteed that this concept, either compound depreciation or compound interest, will appear in, uh, in either paper one or paper two. It's pretty much guaranteed. So uh, it's either gonna be worth six marks for paper one or between say 12 and 18 marks for paper two. Now, compound interest and com compound depreciation, they're very, very similar concepts, but also kind of the opposite, uh, as you can see here by the shape of their respective graphs. You are given the formula for compound interest in the uh, AI formula booklet, but you aren't given the formula for compound depreciation. But keep in mind that the only difference, and this is what you'll need to remember, is that the compound depreciation formula has a subtraction inside the bracket, as opposed to compound interest, which is an, an addition. Now, in terms of the concepts themselves, compound interest is all about investing over time. So every question will always be about investing. It's It'll be something like you invest a certain amount of money into a bank account, or maybe the stock market, or maybe some sort of pension fund, some sort of investment vehicle that you put money in today and you get more money back in the future. To compound depreciation, that's all about the uh, reduction in value of something over time. The most common examples are cars or maybe um, computer hardware or maybe for companies, things like factories or tractors. Their value goes down over time just because they get worn out and maybe they get replaced by um, better models. So this is all about investing. This is all about uh, the reduction in value over time. Now, I think the best way to learn these concepts is to practice a couple of examples. So let's go through the examples that I have here on the right-hand side, and we'll talk about the formula as we sort of pick apart the key information. So this first example involving compound interest, $100 is invested for three years at an annual interest rate of 5% compounding monthly, and we want to find out how much the investment is worth at the end of the three years. Well, let's go ahead and pick out the key information. The $100 invested, that was the initial amount. That's what we call PV. Now, PV stands for present value. That's this PV here in the formula. I like to think about it as an initial investment amount. It's invested for three years. So the duration of the investment, we give the letter N. So you can see here, N is the number of years, and that appears up on the power in the compound interest formula. At an annual interest rate of 5%, this will be our interest rate R. Now that's always an annual number. You don't need to change it if we're talking about compounding monthly. It's always in an annual format. So you don't need to do anything with this number. You don't need to convert it to a decimal. It just stays at 5%. Now this part here is probably the, the hardest part in the formula. This involves uh, the K value, which is number of com uh, compounding periods per year. So you actually need to think about this one. If it compounds monthly, there are 12 months in a year. So therefore my K value will be 12. If it said compounding quarterly, my K value would be four because there's four quarters in a year. If it was semi-annually, my K value would be two. And if it was compounding annually, my K value would be one. Okay, so that's the first step to identify all the key information in the question. Let's now go ahead and solve this. So my formula will be, and I'm looking at my formula here, my future value, that's the value in the future after the three years, will be the present value, which is 100, multiplied by one plus my interest rate. So it's gonna be my interest rate over 100 times K. So my interest rate is five, divided by 100 multiplied by 12, because my K value is 12, all to the power of K times N. So that'll be 12 times three. And there we have it. There is our formula written out with the values substituted. We can then go ahead and use our calculator from there to find out the result. Okay, that's entered there in the calculator. Let's hit enter on that. I get a fraction, let's convert that to a decimal. So it's 116, just rounded to three significant figures. That future value will be $116. So therefore in this investment, this person here that invested the $100 will make $16 over the three years. Okay, so that's compound interest. Let's now try a compound depreciation question. So it's this one here. It's very similar, but just with a subtraction. So $10,000, uh, sorry, a $10,000 car, so that's the initial value, my PV, depreciates over eight years. So my N 
will be eight at an annual rate of 12%. Okay, so my annual rate, my interest rate is R. Now for compound depreciation questions, it's pretty much always gonna have a K value of one. Very rarely does it depreciate at a compounding rate that's not annual for depreciation. So if it's not written, you can assume that the K value will be one. Okay, so that is all the information. Let's now go ahead and substitute this into the formula. And there we have the substitution there. Feel free to pause the video and check against the formula with my substitution. We can then use our calculator from there. It's been substituted into the calculator. We hit enter, convert that to a decimal, and we get 3,596. I'll give this to the nearest whole number. You need to check the question as to how to leave your answer. This one here, I'll just do it to the nearest whole dollar. So 3,596. Okay, that concludes our two examples. Before I uh, wrap up, I just wanna talk about the shape of these two graphs here, because I think it's a very important under, uh, concept to understand. Let's firstly talk about compound interest. You can see here that it, 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 it quickly increases over time, as opposed to going up in, say, a straight line manner. And the reason for that is, for every additional period, let, let, let's say they are years, so this is one year, and this is the next year, this year here increases by a certain percentage. Let's call it 10%. Let's say the compounding rate is 10%. And that results in the value going to the next year. But again, I increase by another 10%. And if you increase a number by a percentage, the bigger the initial number, the bigger the increase. So for example, if I increase $100 by 10%, that'll be $110. Uh, as a uh, and that's a ten dollar increase. But if I increase a thousand dollars by ten percent, that'll be one thousand one hundred dollars, a one hundred dollar increase. So every additional year, not only does the initial balance increase, but also the percentage increase increases as well. Which is why this distance here gets bigger for every additional year. Conversely, for compound depreciation, exactly the same concept, but kind of the opposite. The initial value is a large number. So therefore the percentage decrease, let's say it's 10% again, will be 10% of that large number. Whereas the next year will only be 10% of the reduced number. And as another example, let's say the initial number was $100, then it's gonna decrease by 10% of that or $10. Whereas the next year will only be $90 and decreasing $90 by 10% is only $9. So over time, not only is the initial balance getting smaller, but also the percentage decrease also gets smaller. Okay, that wraps up our video on compound interest and depreciation.